our time with the fifth lesson of Unit 4. Uh, animal camouflage. Animal camouflage. The story, or what we are going to talk about, is what we call it hidden animals. What do you think about this picture? What can you see? Some would say cookies with milk on top of it. Another would take care of the head of this horse and these two horses, who so would say strange looking horses. Horses do not like what we can see here in Egypt every day. We will get to know about hidden animals. It's a way to survive, it's a way to live in the animal kingdom. Let us uh, listen to uh, this script. I would like you to put your finger on the uh, the poem that you're listening to. Track 33 Hidden animals This painting by Bev Doodle is called Intos. A pinto is a name for a horse with a special color, white with brown spots or blotches. How many pinto horses can you find hidden or camouflaged in this setting of brown rocks and white snow? Animals use camouflage to hide and stay safe. Camouflage means that the colors and patterns on an animal's body are the same as the colors and patterns of the place where the animal is hiding. If the camouflage animal does not move, it is hard for other animals to see it. Don't eat me! What animals are hiding in these photos? Camouflage is a good way for a small animal to hide from the larger animals that want to eat it. Birds like to eat bugs, butterflies, Frogs and snakes. Snakes like to eat mice, frogs, and birds' eggs. A yellow flower is a good place for a yellow butterfly to hide. The sick insect is good at camouflage. Its body is the color of bark, brown, and green. Its long body, legs, and antennae blend in perfectly with tiny branches and leaves. Looking for an animal. Animals which eat other animals also use camouflage. A tiger is the largest wild cat in the world. It has orange fur and black stripes. When a tiger creeps silently through tall grass, it is very hard to see. The tiger's stripes are good camouflage. They blend in with the tall grass. When the tiger sees a deer or other tasty animal, it jumps out of the grass and catches its meal by surprise. Changing colors. Some animals change the color of their fur in winter. Why do you think they do that? During the warm months, an arctic fox has brown fur. Its brown color matches the brown soil and grasses of the arctic land where the fox lives. In winter, the arctic land is covered with snow. When the cold weather begins, the arctic fox grows a coat of white fur. This camouflage helps the arctic fox hide from hungry polar bears and wolves. That was all about the camouflage of the animals. Camouflage, what does it mean? It's not hiding, it's not finding a cover, no. It's a way of blending in that makes it hard for you to see me. Let us say, if I press the same pattern like what's behind me, it will make it a little more difficult for you to see me. You can easily see me because I dress in different colors than what's behind me. Different colors, different patterns, whatever the way is. Like 
The snow in the rocks is making it very difficult for the winter horses to be seen as they are brown and white. The shade also is making it difficult because the stick insect is looking exactly like the branches, the little branches of the tree, the color and the shape. So it is difficult for anyone to see it. The color for the butterfly is making it difficult to see it when it stops on a yellow uh, uh, flower. The patterns of the tiger are making it very difficult when it's blending in with the grass that you can see it. The Arctic fox, when it's snowy around, it has a fur of white color, so it's not easy to be seen. When it's not snowy in summer, it has a fur brown color, so it makes it very difficult to reach. That was the camouflage. Let us get to study the new words. We have hide, hard, bar, blend, mean, and fur. Hide. You have this exercise in the um, learner's book that you have. So, look carefully and try to think about a good match for each word with its definition. Take a moment and now let us find the answers. Hide. Be in a place where nobody can see you. Be in a place where nobody can see you. Hard, difficult, not easy. Bark. The outside part of a tree or a branch. Blend. Mix two things together so they become one thing. Meal. Food, for example, dinner or lunch. Meal is a general word doesn't tell you which part of the day you are having this meal. If I say breakfast, you know it's the mornings. When I say dinner, you know it's always at night. But when I say meal, it's in time. It's a general word. The last one is fur, the hair that covers an animal. That's the new words which are in blue color in our uh, script. Now we will take it to something a little new. The difference between the British uh, way of talking and the American way of talking. Pronunciation, the way we talk, works with the letters R, A and R, R, are said differently by speakers of British and American English. Listen to the sentence on the outside of the audio and really, the British English would say the Arctic dogs bark in the dark night. The American English would say the Arctic dogs bark in the dark night. Some English words are spelled differently in the British English and the American English. Can you see the difference here? See the way we write the word color, you know the word. In the British English, color is C-O-L-O-U-R. In the American English, color is C-O-L-O-R. So, there is a difference. The same for the word gray. Gray is this color. G-R-E-Y, that's British. G-R-A-Y, that's American. Look at the poem on the next page. Do you think the poet, speaker, British, English, or American English? Let us listen to this poem together. British English. I'm David Schwartz. It's large. Grayish, English, blackish tree. The colors you see are the colors of me. Grayish, greenish, blackish bark. I'm bumping and watching, part light and part dark. Grayish, greenish, what do I hear? A sound in the branches that's coming to the ear. Grayish, greenish, blackish, yikes! What if a song, what if it strikes? Grayish, greenish. 
English. What do I feel? Oh no, he's found me. I'll soon be his. What is it? The Caribbean pronunciation and the spelling of the words. Gray, grayish, greenish. It's close to the sky, not the clear color, but close to the sky. Colors, the spelling of colors. What do you think? That's an English or American? American. That's an American poet, David Schwartz and Yale Shea. Now we will talk about the uh, notes of the lesson. Painting, picture made using paint. When you use colors, that's a picture or a painting. We have a beautiful painting in the living room. Camouflage, camouflage. The use of colors and patterns around to not be easily seen and recognized. The tiger using a camouflage to hunt for deer. Three mice, this is a noun in plural form, the single form is mouse. Bark, the hard outer covering for a tree. The tree has a hard bark. Wild, that's an adjective, can't be brought up home. When I have a pet at home, it's my pet, I can play with it. But there is a dog or a cat that was not raised in at home. I cannot play with. What if it's a tiger or a snake? Ah, that's very dangerous and it can never be brought up home. This is what they call it wild. The lion is wild. You can't eat one at home. That was about this part. Okay, now we get to the next. Uh, number six stripe. Stripe is the colored line. Zebra has black stripes on its body. Green to move slowly. Biking and moving. The hunter creeps to become closer to hunt the deer. Moving in a very small way, very quiet way, and very carefully. Blend in to match what's around you. When I joined my new school, I could blend then quickly, I could be one of these students very quickly, blend in to match what's around and to be close with others. Meal, breakfast, lunch, supper or dinner, any time that I eat uh, proper food. We have a nice meal at the restaurant. Grayish, that's an American spelling because of letter A, not letter E in British. And it's looking like grey. My shirt is greyish with blue stripes. Strike, hit and attack. The army made a big strike on the enemy. Hit and attack, and it's a quick one. Antonyms and synonyms hidden that can't be seen, so the antonym is seen or shown. I can't find my phone. Where is it hidden? Hard, that means difficult and the anthem is easy. The whole adjective. It's hard to open this jar. Can you open it for me? Hide, anthem and show. Wild, anthem and tamed. Synonyms, blotches, that's stains or spots. The shirt is dirty, it has many blotches. Blend, mix. You can blend sugar with lemon and water to make a lemonade. Look for search. I can't find my pattern, can you help me look for it? Tiny, that's an adjective, means very small. That's a tiny insect. I can't see it. Now we have a little comparison between the British English and the American English and 
spelling. Color, C-O-L-O-R. British, that's C-O-L-U. L-O-U-R. The same for favorite. In American, it's F-A-V-O-R-I-T-E. In British, it's F-A-V-O-U-R-I-T-E. Gray, A in American, E in British. Words used to refer to colors of things. Not a very clear color, but close to it. Brownish refers to uh, the color to close to brown. Reddish, close to red. Remember that reddish has a double D. Blackish, close to black. Yellowish, close to yellow. Greenish, close to green. Blueish, close to uh, blue. And take care of the spelling. B-L-U-I-S-H. Now, it's time for the questions. Replace the underlying words with the correct synonyms. We have, my shirt is full of blotches. I have to ask mom to move shirt. So, I will replace blotches with stains or spots. My shirt is full of stains. I have to ask mom to move shirt. I will go and find the cover so you can't see me. I will go and hide. So you can't see me. I will wear a shirt that looks exactly like all what's around. I will blend them so when you it will be a camouflage. I will camouflage so when you play hide and seek, you can't find me. Now we have the fourth one. To make a lemonade, you have to blend lemon with sugar and water. So you have to mix lemon with sugar and water. I can't find my pen. I will search for it. I will look for it. It's not really brown. It's close to be brown. It's brownish. That was all for today. Hope you had a good time and you enjoyed our lesson. Thank you all and see you.